Okay, so uh, if you click this link, it uh, takes you to a, a protein sequence of yeast and human MS2 are put it online. So I it actually have more sequence than that, but the yeast and human are the first two fast directors. So we click on that and then copy and go back to link. Then we need to align the yeast and the human protein. Uh, you can Google EMBL cluster number two, uh, or you can just click this link. Yeah, that's the... <coughs> What's APE at? Uh, APE will be at the bottom. So, then paste the yeast and human sequence into the, the window. Ah, uh, Jasmine, yeah. do you need a computer? Yes. Oh. Maybe... Maybe I should get one. <laughs> You, you lost your computer? Oh no, mine is in my room. Oh, what? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I, should, I was trying to look this stuff on my phone. Maybe, maybe you can use do this with Dominica. Oh wow. Right. It might take time. Right? Like
multiple codons we can use. Should we use TTT or should we use TTC? And it turns out we should use the one which is used most frequently by each itself. TTT? Yeah, TTT. This is because the most frequently used codon is often the preferred codon. It's because the amine codon has a tRNA. The tRNA is connected to amino acid. And during translation, this tRNA will carry that amino acid into the ribosome. Also, the one that comes. Yeah. The one is used most frequently means it has a lot of tRNA to carry. How can you tell from the chart that it's used most frequently? Oh, 59? the frequency is here. That, that point five nine. That's a percentage frequency. Uh, Fifty nine percent is TTT. I see one. Forty one percent is TTC. So. I see one with like. For. Uh, is looking for F. If you look, this is F. Oh, yeah. F. The F have two choice. But the L, you see the L have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. The the most frequent one is actually TTC. TT no. TTG, sorry, yeah. that's a G, yeah. Okay. So so the most frequent one basically the dark TRNA is the most abundant one. It's like uh, if you look on the uh, cars on the highway. The most frequent car is probably a Toyota. That's basically the largest uh, number of cars. So, 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 and if you want to pick a car which most people use, you pick a Toyota. That's most, the ha ha most uh, uh, cars. Yeah. Basically, that's the, the, the more you produce, the more reliable it is. So, oh. I'm sorry, what? Sorry. I got Google Maps. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Thank you. 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 Thank I use it probably once, so uh, I forgot what it really. is. It's, it's also something got into my mind. So. <laughs> it's actually worked very well. So basically, we want to uh, pick the TTT. This is really the key, TTT. Uh, for this, one. based on the table, we should pick, uh, pick the most frequently used codon. Um, in fact, I, I spent uh, two years working on this damn table. Uh, I can publish a paper on that. On the same? On the codon usage. Uh, also, you located the place where the C was. No, no, no. I, I basically uh, proposed the model to explain why this is, why it is a preferential usage of codon. Oh, no, I'm talking about this one right here. Oh. Oh, OK. Sorry. The question is? Uh, like, Yeah, how I haven't changed it. I'm basically preparing to change it. Okay. So I'm going to basically I'm going to change the original codon to TTT. Okay. So how do we do that? And then I'm going to find out the the east MSH2 open reading frame, the coding sequences. Okay. And then uh, what, the coding sequences. Uh, the east coding sequence is here. Uh, so you can. Uh, you can copy and paste this again into the AP, APE. So highlight, edit, copy, and then uh, I'm going to open up my APE. Uh, APE, my APE. Uh, okay, I have my APE here. Uh, the new, and then I just paste into it. Right. So this is my. Uh, <coughs> Uh, I'm actually going to open reading frame. Uh, and then I go back to <coughs> the front of the thing. Now, how do I find out the, 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 the three fortified amino acid position? Each amino acid corresponds to three nucleotides. So three, four, five 
is how much? 1035. So, but each each coda has three nuclei, so the position is 1033 to 1035. That's this coda. So, and then I go back to APE and I go to edit, select from a tool. So this should be uh, select from a tool 1033 to 1035. There, I see a code called TGC. And TGC stands for uh, cysting. Mm -hmm. TGC should stand for cysting. If you if we go back look at the code again, T. I see TG. It's on the other side. TGC, yeah, TGC. It stands for cysting. So okay, so I know I'm in the right position. How do I find out the, the mutagenic uh, <coughs> primer? <coughs> so we pick 10 base pairs to the left and 10 base pairs to the right. And with the 3 in the middle, we should have 23. That's a primer. That's a primer we have to use. So the position, my position is this. Uh, 1033 to 1035, that's my TGC product. And then I'm going to pick 10 base pair to the left and 10 base pair to the right. So that means plus 10, this will be 1045. Minus 10, this will be 1023. So I'm going to pick from 1023 to 1045. So then I go back to the APE and say select from a tool. Uh, okay, so I'm going to select 1023 to 1045. That's the primary region I'm going to use, except I have not put my mutation there. So I'm going to say copy and then. I just create a new sequences. New DNA sequences. Paste into there. And right in the middle, it should be the TGC. That's the original coda. And what should I change it to? TTT. Excellent. I just type TTT. That should be my mutagenic prime. That's it. So this is the this is my mutagenic prime. Uh, what? We just did it. How do we know it's the... Uh, I was actually paying attention when we were doing that part. Oh, you don't have to be sarcastic. <laughs> 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 she was being sarcastic, but she asked me that question. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, actually, I just... Uh, someone showed me a, a women Handed the music group, uh, how 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 they play the music. It's actually very collaborative, but somehow they call it a name called competitive women's music or something. But it's actually very entertaining. Huh? Like uh, people will play each other. Uh, you talking about the violin? Yeah. Oh, I saw that. You saw that, yeah. It's um like yeah. I, I know I saw it on three women. They one had a cello, one had a viola, one had a violin. Yeah. And they were just going against each other. It was cute. Look, they're actually a group, and one was like the other person's instrument. It was cute. Yeah, it is. It was like ten minutes long. It was cute. Okay, so that's it. So if you can, how about you try to do this on your own? Oh yes, you can. Okay. That's the attitude. I'm a flexible. Really, are you? I'm a clarinet. Oh, where did you find the um the